Hey guys, it is still election season out here in the UK and uh, I've been having a great time having political discussions with many of you people that I've met in the, the pubs and the bars and uh, even at the restaurants, a couple seminars that I've attended. Uh, I've actually got to meet a couple of the local candidates. They've come to the house uh, well, the, the where I'm staying as well as they've met me uh, in the office where I work. And, you know, I've had a chance to really get to know a couple of them and, and, and share a couple ideas. Uh, even with you guys, I've had some great emails uh, as well as some chats, even some bizarre comments in some of my videos. And I really appreciate everybody's passion and their feedback and, uh, you know, really trying to make me as informed as possible. And, and I really appreciate all you guys doing that. Still undecided. I'm, I'm kind of looking over some stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I have to say I've kind of ruled out the Labour Party at this point, uh, simply on economic reasons that a lot of the policies that they're suggesting um, as much as it may sound good, I don't actually think it would benefit uh, the average working man out there uh, in any real kind of capacity. But not to say that everything that the Labour Party is doing is, you know, they, they do have some good points and they do seem to show a lot of compassion for people. Just some of the realities, you know, don't really add up for me. But nonetheless, it's going to be an exciting season. With that said, I just wanted to comment on a lot of the rhetoric and, and, you know, a lot of the backlash I've been hearing about when I tell people that, yes, I most definitely am a capitalist and I support a capitalist and probably more capitalist society than most people. And, you know, I get a lot of backlash for that. A lot of people somehow think that all of the problems of the modern age and all of the issues pertaining to capitalism, you know, all of the problems we have today are somehow related to to capitalism and, and some of the evils of, of capitalism, which is surprising because, I mean, this is the birthplace of, of course, Adam Smith, one of my favorite, uh, you know, early e economists. Uh, he wrote the book, The Wealth of Nations. I'll put links uh, in, the, in the comments below. Um, but somehow people seem to ascribe, you know, all of these bad things to capitalism. And when I turn around and ask them, well, what do you mean by capitalism? I get all sorts of kind of hairy fairy explanations such as it's a system that only focuses on profits and uh, you know it's something that just exploits labor and all of these different types of rhetorics but nobody actually could define what it is. So with that said I am going to define how I've come to understand capitalism um, and anybody who knows me I've been a capitalist since I've been maybe 19, 20 years old. Uh, from the time that I first read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by, you know, Robert Kiyosaki. And he spoke about, you know, how the economy works, how the rich get richer, how the poor get poorer, and how that whole system works. Uh, you know, I, I, by all means, became a capitalist. And um, I would just like to explain what that means. So the first principle of what is capitalism is that it's a social and economic system based primarily on four tenets. The first is the idea of private property. You are entirely allowed to own your body, your home, land, property, the means of production. If you have a family, uh, a factory or a studio uh, or any of your ideas, you're allowed to own those through copyrights and patents, whether it's an invention, a book, a movie or whatever the case might be. And you're allowed to exchange this property of yours with somebody else in exchange for money or some form of compensation. Which brings me to the second tenant of uh, capitalism, which is voluntary exchange, or sometimes what's called the non-aggression principle. In other words, in a capitalist society, nobody is allowed to force you to buy anything against your will, and likewise, nobody can force you not to buy something against your will. So in a purely capitalist setup, all exchanges are completely voluntary. Another person has something that I want and I have maybe money or even possibly an item of exchange and we agree to terms and thereby we make the exchange. Now that brings me to the third tenant, which is capitalism cannot survive without the rule of law. And that is to say without enforceable contracts between buyers and sellers and the certain amount of agreement between the two, uh, the system would completely break down. So you must have the rule of law, especially in the area of contract law and possibly tort, to actually have a, a, a voluntary exchange system that is enforceable and it's fair to both buyer and seller. The fourth tenet, of course, is the free market, which is we should allow voluntary exchanges to take place in an environment where we are not trying to pick winners and losers within a given economy. We should allow the market to dictate things like prices, and which companies survive and which companies do not. 
We shouldn't be using, you know, state funds or state force to try and pick uh, companies that maybe are failing in their particular market and try to prop them up. And likewise, we shouldn't be putting legislation against startup or competing companies to try and drive them out of the market. We want as much free and voluntary exchange uh, as possible to make it as fair uh, in the marketplace as possible. And yes, within that environment, you are going to get some that are more successful and some that are less successful. But the great thing about a capitalist society is that it makes way for charity and other voluntary uh, organizations to help people who are very much disenfranchised completely on a voluntary basis. And generally, people are very generous and they're willing to give uh, to help the poor, uh, to help you know refugees or, or whatever the case might be. And all of that could happen without any kind of government intervention. Now, with that said, a lot of the rhetoric that I've heard actually comes from people suggesting somehow that capitalism is responsible for a great many ills within the modern day society. Now, first, let me make it absolutely clear. There is no country on the face of the earth that has a purely capitalist uh, economy or, you know, a government system. In every country around the world has some form of government regulation, either heavier or lighter as the case might be. But there's all types of intervention that's happening from the state. So the capitalist utopia just simply does not exist. So many times when people point to the ills of a market correction, such as when the dot-com bust of the U.S. stock exchange happened uh, in early 2000, they're trying to suggest that somehow that's a failure of capitalism. But no, you know, there are cycles of booms and busts that naturally take place within any market. Uh, similarly, a lot of people pointed to the housing crisis of 2008. That is a much more complicated issue, but a lot of it actually has to do with bad regulation coming out. Uh, from the U.S. government, uh, the Community Reinvestment Act, that really set the stage for what will ultimately become the, the housing crisis. Uh, but the capitalist, capitalism in and of itself was not purely responsible uh, for the housing collapse. In fact, it's a very complicated topic. I might have to do an entirely different video explaining you know, some of the facets of that. But nonetheless, this is the reality. So when people tell me that they have an issue with capitalism, I simply put it forth to you. Which of these tenants do you have a problem with? Do you have an issue with private property? Do you not think people should own their ideas, their, their self, their house, their, their business, or, or you know, whatever you know, product they may produce? Uh, do you believe that we should force people to buy or not buy particular products uh, within a given market? Or do you think we should eradicate the rule of law? Should we go back to you know, thug rule? Whoever has the most powerful force, we can force people uh, into doing particular things or is it that we should not have the free market should we go back to price controls and uh, you know go back to a time where the government dictates you know how much a person can make so I, I would put it forward like which of these issues do you really you know have a problem with and generally for the most part when you frame it like that people may not actually have as many issues with capitalism as you know they may first perceive now, it doesn't mean the system is perfect, and I'm not trying to imply that it, there definitely are areas where there can be concerns, uh, potentially with monopolies or uh, associations that may conspire uh, against the public. However, a very interesting study by the Mises Institute uh, talking about the supposed robber barons like uh, you know Rockefeller and uh, Andrew Carnegie and these other guys kind of show that the, this monopoly thing may not be as most people perceive. They think of monopoly automatically means higher prices and greater exploitation. Uh, when we see the monopolies of the early 1900s in the Americas, we actually see the reverse, lower prices, more efficiency. Uh, so again, it's not necessarily as clear cut as that. Um, so guys, that is what a capitalist uh, economy looks like. Uh, again, there is no such thing as a purely capitalist economy. But if we've learned anything from the work of Adam Smith and when, you know, free market principles and capitalist principles have expanded around the world, we see that the welfare of most people actually starts to improve. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to be wealthy, but you are actually free to decide how much effort you put into it and determine your own future. And even within that space, there is room for collective thought and coming together to form charities or even if a, if a group of people want to come together and, and form some kind of association, such as a union, all of those things are permissible in a capitalist system because, again, everything is done voluntarily. 
The only violation to this is, of course, state power intervention, which could come in and literally force people uh, by threat of prison or by fines or taxation or whatever the case is. Many of the problems pertaining to the capitalist system has a lot more to do with state intervention than voluntary exchange between individuals. So guys, that's my video about capitalism. It is why I am a capitalist. I'm not saying that the system is perfect, uh, but it is probably better than any other system that we have out there. You are free to disagree with me. Leave a comment below if you know we could have that discussion. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And again, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Take care.